Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Here before. No, it was different. No, it was different. Well, before. I'm one of the guys in this company since 2019. I'm not here today to explain you how Model 1 is produced. I'm here to explain you who and how is declared a vintage wine and as well uh, to show you the, the rooms that we have it in here so you could understand the, the impact of the temperature on the wine. We start this tour in this room. This room is called the lion's room. We do not have lions in here. It's called the lion's room because to meet one of these big barrels we will need the strength of a lion to do that. And here is where we keep the wines that we want to retard the evolution of those wines. So we always put our wines in attics. Uh, these wines are not in an attic because these wines will evaporate, but in a slower way. And that's good for us because we uh, for sure have a special day, a special day to bottle um, these wines. That's why we keep it in here because the temperature here is cooler, not so hot as the other rooms that we have it. These barrels were all made by hand. You still have the name of the cooper and uh, a few uh, barrels. Uh, actually, that's what we call it a tonal because it has 9,000 liters. So oh. this tonal, uh, it was made by the cooper Jose Antonio, which still worked for us. We have a team of four coopers. Um, at this moment, we're not doing new barrels. We are just reusing the barrels that we have. But if we really, really need a new barrel, our coopers will do it for us. This is the wine from the year 2015. This is the Grand Milano. I know just by looking to that big tunnel, the big barrel, uh, that in this room, that's the only barrel available from that year in that way. Because of the harrows. The harrows, they say when the wine begins and when the wine ends. I'll show you another example in the last floor of this building when we moved up. Right over here, we have this uh, barrel. And here is the year that the wine was produced. It's codified. It has a zero in the middle. If you remove the zero, then you will know uh, the year of the production. So this one is from here, 1992. Okay, many years ago, the other um, producers they would come or send someone in here uh, to see which were the years of the wines that we will produce. So they started to go to find those, and then we knew which were the years of the wine. Of course, after the year millennium, after the year 2000, we were not authorized to use this code anymore because we started to belong to the Union European. So wines produced after the year already, we do not use the code. Of course, nowadays we don't need to use this code anymore. We just continue um, doing it just to explain you how it was many years ago. Because nowadays we know all of the other producers, that's why. This building used to be, as many of you know already, many things before being a wine cellar, like a prison, a church, a convent, a monastery, and a hospital. I have the key to take you through the dungeon. And the dungeon is right at the end of this room. It is inside of that dungeon where we keep the first part of the private collection from the Bloody Let's have a look. Let's go. Oh, you can see the end. So the wine is inside of these containers. I know that. In a few countries, these bottles have a special name. Amy Jones, Amy James. Just call it big bottle in Portuguese, people. So that's a big bottle. Okay. This uh, container, these Amy Jones, we uh, keep wines in there. The wines that are inside of these Amy Jones, we bottled already. We just kept the portion in here, inside of these Amy Jones, in case the blended family would like to bottle more of that wine. Because keeping the wine inside of the Demi John is not the same as keeping it inside of a barrel. The barrel is wood, so with the hot temperatures, the wood expands. In here, no. Once it's inside, nothing happens more. But these wines that are inside of these Demi Jones have sediments. 
those sediments can uh, we keep it to keep the body of the wine always good and those sediments can improve the wine for better a little bit not that much of course not it's not even one percent that can change the wine for better if we keep it for a lot of years inside of those tin jars our wine is very sensitive to the lights so when we bottle we bottle in black bottles and in this room is dark but as you see sometimes we have to put the lights on so we covered all of the Jones and wicker. Some of them do not have the wicker anymore because they got destroyed just because of that. Side of the bed, we have three small barrels. Not even the people who have done the premium tour before know what that thing triumph means. It's a new grape. It's a grape that exists in Fort St. Wine. And that's the first experience, the first wine that this company is producing with that grape variety. So not even in the other tour, we have the name of that grape in the room where we have the, all of the grapes. It's uh, all of those three small barrels are from the year 1977. The, the first one from left to the right, it is made with that uh, very difficult grape, the, the Starbo grape. That's why they call it the cluster because it's uh, very complicated to use it for this type of wine, for the Novena wine. And the other two are produced with a Triumph grape. Like I said here, it's the first Madeira wine being produced with that grape variety. So far, I asked the winemaker how the experience is going. So far, it's not something that we will bottle. Okay. Question. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to the last floor of this building. I will explain you in that room. Uh, I don't think I can sit and drown in the chair. <laughs> but if it's pointier, we in the middle, we could control the direction where we wanted to move the barrels. That's why. That's why our barrels have this shape. So you can totally, you can understand that these wines were totally made from our coopers and just for here, for this uh, wine. Some people sometimes they ask us if we um, buy barrels from other whiskey or champagne producers so we could age Madeira wine. It's the opposite. We sometimes sell the barrels to them so they could age the whiskey or the champagne or uh, beer. And you can see that because of the shape. So this was made by us. Too. By the way, we stopped selling barrels to the whiskey, champagne or beer producers because we continue using barrels that we So barrels that you will see, for example, this one is almost 100 years old. Continue reusing and reusing the barrels. Okay. Behind this building, there's a palace. It's called the Saint Lorenzo Palace. In front of the palace, there's a cafe called the Golden Gate. Okay. Everyone knows this. Uh, Golden Gate cafe. It's not the first one, but they did it. Okay. Between these two buildings, there is a street with a small inclination. The boats used to stop in front of the palace. Just so you know, the sea level used to come into the palace. And so the boats used to stop in front of the palace. They would put the ropes and bring up the boats until in front of the Golden Gate Cafe. If you visit the Golden Gate Cafe, I'm not saying that you should go inside or drink something. Just see what it's written in the wall. In the wall it has a golden plate and it has a full history in there. That corner, it's known as the world corner. Because the boats used to stop in there. So the people that were coming inside of those boats, they were bringing news from whatever was happening in the whole world. So it's known as the world corner because they knew what was happening in the world by those people that were coming inside. This was a totally public street. These buildings that you see, they were made after John Glendie uh, bought this building. Okay, so this was a public street directly to the front of the house. John Glendie, we say that he bought this building in 1838. He actually bought this building in 1836. But since 1838, we start to work as a winery because these were all individual houses, all. That's why it was a prison, a church, a convent, a monastery, all at the same time, okay? So when John Lani came here, he bought this, uh, all of the houses where the purchase was um, completed in uh, 1836. Then he converted to a winery in 1839, so, uh, 1838, sorry. So since 1838, it works as a winery. You can see that we still have the original numbers of uh, houses on top of it. If you see the documents how this building used to be many years ago, you will see just individual houses. And now it's a whole new building. And this one over here is the oldest street of Madrid. The documents will change this building totally, but they're still 
something that it will feel always like this. It's known as the oldest street of Punjab. Okay. Let's go over there to the last floor of this building so we can understand the impact of the temperature and the difference. Hold on. You were here before your uncle? Yeah. You remember them? We got you. that this one is very young it's from the last year this one has a lot of water and we want to um, remove a large quantity of water of the one okay. we keep it in a hotter place because with higher temperatures in here that water will evaporate faster and we keep the wines in smaller barrels because this is the first contact of the wine and the wood so younger wines smaller barrels older wines bigger barrels, okay? Today here, the temperature is 23, 23 degrees, around that. But that's because we are almost going in winter. During the summertime, the temperatures here, we registered this year, the highest temperature in this room, it was 37.5 degrees. So when it's really hot, we start sweating, we lose the water of our body, and it happens the exactly same thing to the mother one. When it's hot, this wood expands a little bit, it blows with the hot temperatures, especially because it's a very thin wood. Then the oxygen goes inside, the water comes outside as evaporation, and the alcohol concentrates more. Okay, so there's no secrets. This is how we age modern wine. But for example, imagine that it's too, really too hot in here, and the wine is evaporating very fast, and we don't want it. So we remove this one from here and put it in another room where the temperature is cooler. The only thing that we do it in here, we do not force temperatures, we only work with natural temperatures, but of course, we have rooms with different temperatures. So if we need the wine to evaporate more or to evaporate less, we move it from the room that the wine is in. We are constantly moving the wines from room to room. This wine, uh, probably next year, next year will be in the floor downstairs. Okay, so we constantly do this, we move wines from room to room. We've never had the same temperature that was before, so that's why. And, and when do you do you that? Because obviously now you've got tours going on, so when in the day? Or... Even when the tours go on. Oh, oh he's doing <laughs> yeah. We have a machine that okay. is not very lovely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we just connect the tubes, press the button, and the machine will remove the wire. It's very easy. Yes. Oh, see, don't make it. Here in Blanvis, we don't work hard, we work smart. <laughs> <laughs> the barrels are always in the same place. The move is the liquid. We open these, put the red silicone tube, then the tube goes in that hole over there. We put the other part of the tube inside of the empty barrel, press the button on the machine, and the machine will pump the wine down. Same thing. Okay. So it's the wine between these empty barrels. Remember that thing that I told you about the harrows? Mm -hmm. You see this barrel over here? It has one arrow in here. Where is the other one? Over here. At the end. Okay. So, just by knowing that the other arrow is here, I know that these barrels in between are all from the same year, same room. Okay. Good question. This word, Kintesh, means a little farm, or a farm with a few aircrafts. So the Blandis, they have two kintesh. They have 
the Quinta Central Museum here in Funchal, where they have one hectare of vineyards, and they have the Quinta do Bispo from the north of the island, where they have five hectares of vineyards. So, this wine is 100% produced with the grapes from the Blandis farms. That's what this word Quintesh means. But you don't see nothing. Might be a blending of the grapes from Blandis and the grapes from the farmers. Okay, but this one was 100% produced by Blandis in Blandis vineyards and no other grapes that wasn't produced by Blandis. Sometimes you can also see in front of the word English, QSL or QB is the same thing. These jugs are just measures many years ago to know how many they were putting inside of a barrel. The measure for the jug. Now we have a more modern fancy equipment. We have a wooden stick that we put it inside of the liquid. Go up here. Let's go to the other room. The other room, the temperature is different. This room. So, we do not feel the same things. They are all different. When we taste or smell something, um, some people are more intensely the palate, and other people not that much. But in terms of wine, there's no right, there's no right or wrong. There's what you feel and what you like and what you enjoy. So I will I will uh, like to know what are the things that you feel it as soon as you came inside of this room. The smell of the wood. It tastes. It smells like wood. Humidity. Perfect. Something sweet, can you precise more what is it? Okay, so none of you cooks. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> none of you feel the um, spices in here. No? Well, vanilla is the only thing I'm going to say. Vanilla? Perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. Vanilla. You feel asafran. You feel tobacco in here. And all of those things that you feel it in here. It will be in the wine and that's precisely why we keep the wines in here for a few years but i should tell you that in this room there's a lot of humidity you can see it in the walls mm -hmm. that humidity will make that this wine will lose alcohol and not water so the alcohol that we gain in there we will lose it in here then we will gain again when we move the wine in front this is a game we are constantly losing and winning but we precisely put the wines in here because these aromas that we all describe together will be in the wine. The wine will gain these aromas with the evaporation of the alcohol and leaving the wine. Okay, so that's very important that we move the wines from room to room because in one room we, wine, we might win or lose something. That's why we constantly move the wines from room to room. Okay? So, we understand this thing about the temperature. Now, let's see the second part of the private collection from the Blandis family. We start with this door by seeing the first part of the private collection, the dungeon. Now let's go to the second part. In my opinion, that's the most, um, that's the best part of the store because it's really a special room. Uh, the third part of the private collection were all of the wines that were surrounded in that room where you were waiting to start the tour. Okay, so that's all of the wines that you saw in the vintage room. This private collection of the Blandis family. We don't sell it. Okay, so the second part. Is something? A lot of, a lot of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> The second part of the private collection for me that's the most interesting part uh, of their own collection. <laughs> that way, my Sorry. <laughs> There are a few rooms that still remain from the 16th century. 
The size of the Portuguese people back in the 16th century, they were the same size of my waist. So there are a few doors of this size. That's because they were doing the doors of the size so they could fit in. This room was already considered too tall for the Portuguese, but not for some of you. So please be careful when you go inside. So this is the second part of the private collection. More than jumps. We saw a lot of them jumps already. So let's see what is behind this door. Yeah, yeah. Please. Careful with your hands. Mr. Richard's trying to see if he could fit in. <laughs> From the year 1755, the wine is the staple of the Egyptian. How can a blandy have a wine from 1755 if the first blandy arrived in Madeira in 1808? Simple. The blandy's family, the first blandy, John Blandy, a few years uh, after he establishes his company, he decides to buy other three companies that were producing the same wine as. The Blandis family. So the Blandis family bought the company Miles. Blandis also bought the company Leacock. And Blandis bought the company Cossart Gordon. That's why we have that one. Because the Cossart Gordon, they were the first English companies, uh, English company producing Madeira wine. And when John Blandis bought that company, bought that wine as well. That mm. wine came included. Not all of the wines that are here inside of this safe were produced by Blandy. Some of them were gifted to Blandy's. Like um, there's one over here, Grams. The Grams is port wine. It was gifted to Blandy's. So they keep in here in their private collection. The wines that you see it in here, they were all recorded in 2019. That's very important. Although we keep the bottles upright, the acidity of the wine will destroy the cork. The cork, if you keep it laid down or upright, the cork will be destroyed. If you keep it laid down, the acidity destroys directly the cork. The cork will crumble and you lose all of the wine. If you keep it upright, the cork will dry, it will shrink, and it will fall into the wine. So every single 20 years, you will need to remove the corks and put the other ones. You don't do that by yourself. You take it to a company so they could change the cork for you without the oxygen goes inside of the bottle. Mm -hmm. The corks of these wines are extremely, not of these ones, but for example, imagine that we have never changed the corks of these wines. The cork was already deteriorating. So we can't use a normal cork puller to remove this cork because as soon as we twist the cork puller, it will crumble and fall into the wine. I'll show you upstairs what you should use to open a bottle of a very old wine that you see that the cork is already too old. It's a butler's teeth. It has two legs and removes the cork like this. You will need to twist it. Um, with this thing, you can remove the cork whole, not in pieces. And that's what we advise for the people to use in very old wines. If you don't know how to use the heating system, then this one is perfect. Who 
declares the vintage, for example, by the quality of the grapes from this year, our winemaker can say that this wine will be a good vintage in a few years. So we wait all of those years, we check the wine, move it from room to room and all of that. When we decide to bottle that wine, we take a sample, we send it to the Wine Institute. There's an institute here in Madeira uh, from wine and embroidery. And they proof or reproof if it's going to be a vintage or not. So last word is from the Wine Institute, not from the company. But they have the last words after we had the whole work. Not in the beginning when we will harvest the grapes. Only after we age the wine. Most of the times they agree the, with the vintage wines that we chose from year to year. So that white stamp that you see it in the bottle, that's the um, certification of our wine institute. You see three letters, I, V, B, M. I is for institute, V is for vino, wine. B is from embroidery in Portuguese, bordado. And M is for madeira. So all of these wines that have these white stamps and the ones that you don't see the white stamps you see the red cap it's underneath the red cap this white stamp it's the proof the certification of the wine institute so if one day you would like to buy a very old vintage madeira wine if it doesn't have this white stamp think twice it might be something in the bottle but not the original one So, can I ask a question? So, the bottle, for instance, behind you, 1940, mm -hmm. has that been recorked? Yes, in 2019. All, all were recorked. 2019? 19. 19. So, 60 years more? It will stay more 20 years here. Oh, right. Okay, in 2029. Mm -hmm. 29. Yeah. It's the it's the right mathematics, right? Mm. Okay. I suck in mathematics. 39. 39. 39. Record four years ago, in 2019. Yeah? So it's four 16. years ago, yes. Yeah. It was recorded four years ago. Do you also it, do you also try those wines before putting a new cork on it? No, no, no. <laughs> totally forbidden. <laughs> no, these wines is for the Blondie's family. So after they open it, if it's not good, they just don't drink it. We will never sell wines from here, never. The wines from here is for their own consumption. Oh, no. <laughs> That's Big family, Yes, <laughs> I, under I understand. <laughs> Should we sit here? Just for 30 minutes or one hour, okay? <laughs> this is for you. The company Miles bought the company Cossar Corman here and the company Leacock. So this wine was not produced by Blandis, was produced by the, Co by the Miles, sorry. So this grape over here, Tinta Negra, produces the four Madeira wines, dry, medium, dry, sweet, and medium, sweet. This one is sweet. If this wine was produced with this grape by the Blandis company, you would see Duke of Clarence, this one. not Tinta Negra, but the name of the Duke, okay? This is the thing that I promised to show you to open the bottle. It has two legs. One leg is bigger than the other one, so we will introduce the bigger leg, squeeze it, and introduce the other one. As soon as the two legs are inside, you will do this movement, like this. Okay, so the legs will find their way. When this part touches the cork, you hold the bottle, pull it, and the cork will be here in the middle. And if you use it well, the cork won't be damaged like you see it. Okay? You can buy one in practice at home. 
I do not recommend to you to use these in uh, wines very recent, very young, because the cork is too uh, rigid. So if you use it, I, I did this once in a very young wine, not Madeira wine, a red wine. The cork was so, so hard, so synthetic, that I broke the bottle in my hand from the heat. Okay? So uh, be careful when you use one of these in a very old wine. This is used 